All right, so unless you guys have been living under a rock for the past year, you've probably heard a lot about AI and how artificial intelligence is going to fundamentally change our world. And though AI can provide us with fast access to relevant information and help us to solve some problems, it's far from perfect, and in fact, it's absolutely abysmal in some applications that really do matter. Before we get started, though, a little bit on my background. I'm a fourth year PhD structural chemistry candidate, and in my field I do a lot of Python programming, structural refinement, and research to solve problems that have never been tackled before and are on the cutting edge of energy and science in general. Because of the nature of the work that I do, AI tools like ChatGPT can fail pretty miserably at giving actionable answers to questions that you may have. Now, it's not to say that AI is completely worthless, but I do feel that it's important to present AI in a more realistic and less idyllic light. So that way you know where AI is great and where it falls short. So if you're ready, let's jump into a couple of basic examples of where AI fails. So first example here, I wanted to get better at working towards transitioning a piece of my code that I'd written towards using the property decorator in Python to handle the getting and setting of important properties of a superclass. So I asked ChatGPT if it could give me an example of how this would be done with a dictionary object. So it provided me with this answer, which at first glance to the untrained eye looks like it would work. But if we take it into a Jupyter notebook and we test that response, you can see here that using ChatGPT's solution, we actually get an error. So why is this? Well, if we put in some print statements here, and here we can rerun the code and we'll see that the perceived input to Python was that the setter was getting a tuple of tuples of tuples, which GPT didn't anticipate. And so I came up with this correction here, offered it to the AI, and the AI validated that my corrections were actually true. And if we go into the same Jupyter notebook and we use my corrected method, you can see that it works exactly as expected. So that's one example. But the next example I think is a little bit more scary and a little bit more unnerving. And let's just get into it. So here I asked for some references to learn about peak breadths and line broadening in X-ray diffraction data. AI gave me a list of five citations, all of which look pretty reasonable, albeit they're in a really weird citation style. But let's take a little closer look here. So the first citation here is a book written by Warren, which is a fantastic resource for learning about the fundamentals of X-ray diffraction patterns and for learning the sources of line broadening and what that information can tell you about the structure of the underlying materials. Now, if we move on to number two, this is a valid resource, but the citation, again, is formatted in a really weird way, and it's not easy to find the actual resource if you just were to copy and paste this into a search engine. You're not really going to get any results, and that's kind of frustrating. You'd think that AI would have a little bit of a nicer format for actually taking action on its suggestions rather than just giving you a whole bunch of things and hoping that you can find the resources. But moving on, number three, I was able to find pretty easily. Number four, this is one that kind of was a little bit frustrating and it's something that I've talked with my colleagues about and they've expressed the same findings. So here is a paper that they say is written by Scardi and Leone. Both of these scientists are well known in the field of crystallography and structural chemistry, but the particular citation that they give in ChatGPT seems to be a little bit off. I'm pretty sure that the actual paper that they were referencing is this one. And it has a very different title. So that's not really great. And especially if you're trying to use this as a survey tool to learn about something, and ChatGPT is giving you papers that don't exist or things that are basically fabricated, that's not really helpful to scientific inquiry. And as a person who does high level scientific research and have to solve problems that have never been tackled before and leverage information from people who have tackled problems analogous to mine before, I feel that I'm in a pretty good position to bring a dose of reality into the modern mythology of the AI revolution. Now I'll concede that AI in a number of ways can be a great help. In particular, I really do enjoy being able to use it to generate a start for an idea that I have or to correct grammar and sentence structure. I also really enjoy using it as a coding co-pilot, so to speak. 
Though I haven't really played around with it, AI can also be used to create some pretty interesting images and musical pieces, stuff like that. Although recent strides in AI's potential to autonomously execute even simple laboratory tasks especially is really cool, when you're talking about data analysis, AI really shows its deficiencies here. And they're particularly evident, I would say, in inaccuracies that you find in X-ray diffraction pattern analysis with various overlapping phases, particle sizes, complex space groups, those types of things, which even for a person can be very challenging to deconvolute, especially if you don't have very much knowledge of the actual preparation of the sample or the methods that were used to collect the data. In conclusion, although AI continues to evolve and it continues to be really impressive, acknowledging its fallibility is really paramount to its utility you need to look at it as a tool rather than an authoritative source of information. And it's something that needs to be overseen by humans, as evidenced by occasional missteps in rudimentary tasks and frequent missteps in more complex tasks, particularly, like I said, when you're going into scientific inquiry. It's really got a lot to learn and a lot to improve on to be any sort of useful tool for really high level science moving forward. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, definitely make sure to drop a like, leave a comment down below and subscribe for more content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later.